I'm Forrest Flanagan and I'm going to show you all PXRX. In the entry area, there's not much. There's a few periodicals on the walls. Uh, but you have an entry area. Yeah, we have a little entry area. Um, there's a nice little meeting room through here, and this is open. Uh, we were in here earlier playing Dominion. Uh, but like when I was getting a startup going, I would meet with clients in here, and it looks fancy because we've got whiteboards and lighting and a projector screen. Um, there's lots of different groups that'll meet in here. Like there's a programmers meet up a little bit later today for. Uh, I'm trying to remember what it is, uh, OpenGL or something. All right, um, out through here is uh, most of the uh, most of the interior stuff uh, that needs air conditioning and stuff like that. So like, there's light fabrication in this direction. Um, Your own fab lab. Yep, we've got a couple different 3D printers. Um, right now, we're mostly using these two these two replicators. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we've had um, we've had 3D printers in the space for like five years, so we've seen things advance, and we particularly like how low maintenance these things are. Mm -hmm. Set it, you know, actually work. It's a tool, not a project, as it I is. like to say. Yeah, yeah, it just works. Um, yeah, there's also a little uh, CNC mill here. Um, it's pretty capable. Somebody was down here earlier making parts for their motorcycle. Uh, they want to mount larger brakes on it or something crazy like that. Um, this rig with the machine vision cameras and the DLP is what we use for 3D scanning, or what we will use as soon as the software is sussed out. Um, I see laser cutter. Uh, mm -hmm. this What's your wattage? Yeah, uh, 60 watts, and that's kind of actually kind of a fun story. We got it shipped over to the port. There was actually a lot of trouble at the port. It went to California first, and uh, we had to get it shipped back to Houston always make sure that the invoice is right um yeah it shipped as a 40 watt machine and it didn't have any idiot switches it still doesn't have any any idiot switches uh and uh it had light leaks everywhere and it didn't have very good control on the coolant uh on the coolant circulation for the laser tube so we got um we got a cooling system for a water fountain, and it's just circulating in a bucket beneath the machine, uh, controlled by this, which we hacked on there. Mm -hmm. um, and we also wanted a 60 watt tube, but the 60 watt tube is like this long, and the machine is this long. So that's what this thing is about. <laughs> the rest of the tube. Yeah, the rest of the tube just expands into there. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's pretty good. Little CNC lathe, very mm -hmm. useful. Um, and then this is a cool thing. This is a TXRX project. Uh, project Delta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually fabricate a ton of these parts here. Like there are these aluminum sliders and stuff mm -hmm. uh, that are um, that came off the CNC plasma cutter. Uh, these Doran runners mm -hmm. come out of the CNC lathe. There's a couple interesting innovations in here, like uh, mm -hmm. a really interesting uh, sensor that was fabricated here for leveling the base. Mm -hmm. um, and then the carbon fiber on a lot of the parts, mm -hmm. which we made jigs for in the laser cutter. Nice. And then you all actually fabbed the carbon fiber yourself. Yeah. It's very nice. Cool. <laughs> all right. And that's, the, that's pretty much the, uh, the whole of the, uh, what did you call it? Your light fabrication area? Yeah, that's what I call it anyways. Um, gotcha. Yeah, there's a bunch of little things that have been skimmed over, like up on top of the shelves here. They're one of our old machines. Uh, yeah, one of our old machines and one of our really old machines, which was an experiment in 3D printing every part of the printer. Just yeah, even the bearings. Nice. Yeah. Uh, that was during, like, year one of TXRX. Um, so that was a cool experiment. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right, so. All right, where are we heading next? All right, uh, we're going to head over and take a look at some of the work areas. Uh, this 
is a work area uh, geared up for electronics. And um, this is a private owned bay is how that works? Yep. Uh, there are lots of bays that are about this size that members can lease out for, I'm trying to remember what it is, uh, I think it's 250 bucks a month. It's pretty good. And then you can do whatever you want with it from there. Uh, lots of people share bays. Um, there's a lot of people sharing work area here. Um, there's like a biology experiment going on here. Somebody's building a printer back there. Somebody's little electronics work area. Uh, a lot of cool stuff here. There's also a lot of public work area. Like uh, this is uh, this is under renovation right now, but uh, this is just public electronics work table. Mm -hmm. uh, and then all these bins are stocked with tools and parts that are just open to use. Like I keep most of these things stocked just so people can grab them when they need a resistor or something. Right. Yeah. So this is an area that's uh, currently being built out. Um, more work areas, more tables and stuff like that. Uh, these tables are great. We manufacture them ourselves out of reinforced concrete, and then we weld these up in the metal shop. Now, you're pouring the concrete yourself, or are yep. you... Okay. Yeah, we think we contract that out. No, 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 I meant where you may be reclaiming old concrete slabs, smoothing them. Oh, no, them no. And... These are too nice. And they're poured concrete. Got it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is going to be a bunch of work areas. So is the area behind you. Like the, the $250 a month bay kind of work areas? Or? No, no. Like lots of uh, little add an extra $40 a month to your normal membership and you can get one of these tables. You're as your own personal 4x8 workspace? Yep. That's exactly it. What is this? Oh, uh, that's the hookah from the space program. No, it's a scanning electron microscope. <laughs> Yeah, um, this was actually a scrapyard find. Uh, Houston puts a lot of weird things into scrapyards. Yeah, the guys didn't know what it was. They're like, ah, oh, it's a lot of stainless. We couldn't let that go for more or for less than two hundred bucks. It's like sold. We'll take that. Yeah, they don't know that there's like a five-pound hunk of tungsten as the top element in there. <gasps> yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Uh, heading through here. Um, yeah. yeah, this is cool. Uh, one of our member, uh, one of our members, uh, Booms Bay, I pointed out earlier. Um, he's a big engineering fabrication type, and he just decided to kind of combine his lab with our lab. And he brought these neat toys over that are getting a place here. Like, this is a huge picking place and it can do like 60 reels, and this will let it do like another 200 reels. <laughs> yeah, and then that's the infrared oven, and then there's like three little CNC things for milling out boards and doing the through holes and, you know, just light operations like that. And of course, server racks and whatnot. We already had those. This is just where they live. Yep. Um, yeah, there's a bit of storage up this way. You gotta have storage. Oh, I see. You've got a storage bay over here. Yeah, this is just uh, this is just bulk storage. Like, there's all kinds of things here. I like um, the fact that you have stairs to get to them. We have to use a ladder to get to ours. Yeah, that's a bummer. Yeah. It means it doesn't get used very much. Yeah, there's all sorts of things here. Like, we used to have this really badass bio lab that me and this guy Jacob built out. Um, but there's just a. Uh, there's some specific things that you need to make a room a bio lab, and this place didn't have them. So most of the stuff stored up here, and then lots of other random crap. Like you can find old castoffs from NASA and you know, vacuum pumps, computer components, whatever. It's up here, and it's just waiting for somebody to remember that it's up here, and then find a place to integrate it into the larger space. Uh, do you have uh, like an inventory list of this stuff like on your website or or, yeah. in, or virtually in some way? Yeah, we're working on it actually. Caddy Corner to here is another bay that's full of storage that we are um, going through everything, taking pictures and uh, punching it into a spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, well, we're heading that way, I guess. Yeah, we're gonna head over this direction at the second set of stairs. Look where I'm going here.
So yeah, this is uh, this is the craft area. Um, lots of things go on in the craft area. Like uh, one thing that's a favorite is this rolling die cutter right here. Um, we have lots of dies for making like hexagons, squares, nice round edge cards, tokens, stuff like that. And this will do cardstock. It'll do uh, thin plastics, all sorts of things. Uh, it'll do most things if you just give it multiple passes and if it can be cut by a razor edge. Nice. Do you but, make uh, your own dies? Uh, we can make our own dies. Uh, a member just had some of them, and you know, she volunteered them up. But, uh, yeah, members are interested in making their own board games. So, like, the hexagons are uh, from one member who was making their own Catan sets. Yeah. Um... And there's their uh, fabric works over there. Oh, yeah. Um, there's lots of different sewing machines, and there's even, like, a CNC embroidery machine tucked away. Um, and then there's linoleum block printing. Uh, really, just about anything that's crafty ends up working its oh, way sure. over here. What's with all the molds? Somebody doing casting, or...? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was actually... I got lucky, and I found those things. Uh... At our last space, we had a big area dedicated to uh, ceramics. That was actually like our whole front room, and it helped uh, it helped the male-female ratio a bit because I don't know. I guess people thought, walked by and they thought we were a pottery barn, <laughs> and so they'd get like the whole family over and then they would see the back it's like holy moly you're like a big robot factory or something <laughs> anyways uh yeah I, I missed the pottery but this place didn't have a good place for the pottery because there's all this wood in the construction and uh you need to be right next to where the power comes into the building to run the kilns we've got like three kilns here and they're all pretty big um, and we're gonna set them up in the new addition. We just added another wing, like another 4,000 square feet or so. Um, we're slowly buying up the whole city block. It's really fun. See, that I know you're not kidding, which is what makes that even funnier. Yeah. Wow. Got a little coffee nook here. Yep. Yeah. I should point out, we have more books. Uh, things have just been shuffling around a bit as we build out the new electronics lab, so. Um, heading on this way. Let's see. Alright, so one of the key things to TXRX's success in, like, gaining membership and building uh, meaningful connections within the membership was food. Yeah. Like, I don't think we would have done well at all if it hadn't been for food. Um, so one of the first things we did when we got this bare, naked, uninsulated warehouse, before we built walls, before, you know, we even did, uh, the overhaul and the AC and the insulation and stuff like that, was we got plumbing and we got electrical and we got gas run to that corner so we could build this kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, passing by, you see a little sitting area, there's vendor storage, uh, vending machines that work on the RFID cards. I'm just going to gloss over all that. Um, yeah, moving on this way towards the kitchen, big seating area. Yeah, this is where we'll have member meetings and stuff, just comfy chairs and uh, low surfaces and lots and lots of power outlets. Just the, outs the yeah. outside of the thing yeah. down here. And here's the kitchen that's so right important to build. Here. Just, yeah, in. none of this was here. This was a naked warehouse. I can't tell you how hard it is to have to plumb something if there's no plumbing. See, this involves uh, jackhammering a line through the building going in that direction, uh, then out to get to the city drain. Yeah, but... uh. Yeah, we got this badass gas stove. Yeah, like... And ventilation hood. Yep, the vent hood, which I think actually goes somewhere now. <laughs> uh, it used to be that it would just, it carried it a few feet away, and it actually dumped it uh, right into this AC inlet, so that wasn't nice. <laughs> 
And I love how you have everything labeled. Yeah, everything's labeled. Like, I know that this is going to have pot holders and trivets in it because it's labeled for pot holders and trivets. I know knives are in there and knives are in the knife block and small tools are in there and the prep tools and the spatulas and the wooden spoons. Everything's labeled because if so many people are doing dishes, you're never going to keep it in the same place. Nice. Yeah. Very. And I love your kitchen. Yeah, tons of kitchen gadgets, stand mixers, fryers, and all, uh, deli slicers, you and name it. It's most here. of this is owned by the space, or most of this yes, is owned by members? It's owned by the space. Nice. Yeah. Ah. Like a couple members will drop things off, but it's more or less owned by the space. Yeah, we sure. don't have people that are taking and dropping things. Right. So yeah, if you don't have a good kitchen already, it's really important. Uh, we have free food every Friday night, and then rotating cooks on schedule, no pretty big food. meals. We, uh, we do donations. That's true. Yeah. Uh, we do donations for the food, and we frequently make up the cost of the food, which is really what's important. That, and it gets a ton of people here. We and also Friday do, night and Sunday brunch. And Sunday morning, yes. It's not fair to call it brunch, because if you get here at 11, then chances are the food is gone. <laughs> You might get some bacon and biscuits, but uh, you're gonna miss the waffles and whatnot. Okay. So one more thing that uh, y'all should really see, um, in addition to the food, which is just sort of like donation encouraged uh, every mm -hmm. Friday night and Sunday morning, um, I wanna point out the free beer. <laughs> Did you say free beer? Free beer, yeah, and it's, it's the good stuff. Uh, what is this here? Yeah, uh, this is from 512 Brewing Company. Um, do they so, donate it, or do y'all buy it? Uh, we buy it, um, but yeah, we're right next to St. Arnold's Brewery, and I don't know if you got that in Detroit, but uh, yeah, we can get beer from them sometimes. And we're next door to uh, yeah, you're next door to a meadery, so I'm like super jealous. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you can get a good deal, I think it's worth it to get people a little bit intoxicated. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, because people come with us food. Uh-huh. Yeah. People shouldn't be so intoxicated that people don't want to bring their kids, I think. But that's but, how people bring their kids. Yeah. And then uh, I, I, I know that I saw somewhere, I see this. I think I saw it on your uh, on your website or something about free beer, but... Yeah, there's free beer. Ah, oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah, free is in beer. All right, I am going to... I'm going to... Take a, a quick look at your uh, bathroom and stuff here, just because. Right. Now look at that first bathroom, it's scary. It's all right looking. All right. Oh, that's kind of big. Oh yeah, it's kind of huge because that's where we're gonna put showers in. Yeah. Woo, there we go. Oh, I see, you're actually gonna put in, you've got shower stalls, that just goes out into, oh hey look, I can see bicycles hanging up in the rafters. Yeah, that goes out to the uh, Yeah, I made the mistake of attempting to use this at one point and Ozzy just went right through, I was like, hey. Like, oh, uh, hi, Ozzy. <laughs> yeah. No, whenever I use it, then I like to yodel or something. Yodel. <laughs> well, just because the echo, or just to keep people from walking oh, through? Oh, just to let people know the, that there's somebody the in here. The door doesn't really lock properly, huh? No, it doesn't. But this one locks properly, and it's all fit out as a bathroom. Yeah, this one looks... So this is the... Yeah. And you got, like, the big shelf, and this... At one point, it had like this doomsday supply of toilet paper oh, and what Costco's other fixings. Yeah. No mirror, though. It's like somebody went. Yeah, no mirror because if somebody's been here for terribly long, they don't want to look in the mirror. And if you want mirrors, you can check the eyewash station. Yeah, there's no uh, huge mirror room. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. So um, instead of money, you put in RFID cards? Yeah, uh, any member gets an RFID card, and you can dump things into an escrow account. They take money, too, but it's uh, it's nice, and eventually when we have uh, machines that are full of, like, um, plasma cutter heads and, you know, welding rod and uh, microcontrollers and stuff like that, you don't want to keep feeding in dollar after dollar, so it's good to have an RFID card tied to your escrow account. Now, this just comes with your membership? You don't have to pay anything extra for this member storage? Extra. Yeah. And there's enough for everybody to have one? Yeah, as anybody who asks for one, at least. Uh, and we've expanded the member storage a bit. We have lots and lots of these bins from that school, of course. Like, every classroom had a couple. 
so yeah, we have lots and lots of storage. And oh, then nice. you can get larger member storage if you want. You can get it in like a big, uh, what is it, like a 30-gallon bin or something. Uh-huh. Uh, that tends to be more of a more of a metal shop sort of thing. Up here is just another storage area, yeah. basically the same but as the last one? The storage is all categorized, and it's being documented and photographed and stuff like that. And that's just all up there. Yeah. You can peek up there if you want, but you're just going to see a bunch of stuff in boxes and on yeah, shelves. Yeah, I know. I, I can see the size of it just by looking at the floor underneath it. Yeah, it's pretty huge. Nice. Yep. Um, so, what is out this door? All right, out this door is pretty cool. Now, is that just a closet next to it? Yeah, that's uh, that's where I keep the breaker box. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, nothing special. Alright, through this door, that's where we have the shop. Um, is this that more storage kind of stuff you're talking about here? The tubs? Oh yeah, this is storage tubs. Remember storage tubs, that's an option too. And these things, they reel around, so if you have a bunch of heavy stuff, then you can pull it over near your work area. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, oh, I love your rules. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, nice. that's the big thing is that everyone has stop work authority. That's one of my favorite rules. Nice. Yeah, it, that ends up uh, covering you because, like, if you're doing something and later on somebody says, why did you do that? That was retarded. And I'm like, but you were a spectator and you had stop work authority. Why did you let it go on if you're going to complain about it? Anyways. Nice. Um, Wood shop. I don't need to go over a wood shop. It's well, actually, just tell tell me quickly what what you have here. All right, all right. Uh, this have, is a, a nice little table, table saws, saw. uh, compound miter saws, uh, planers, mm -hmm. jigsaws, band saws, routing tables. Uh, let's see what is it? Little CNC router there. I see. Yeah, uh, two of them. Yes. And, uh, and a slightly drill larger one. and a couple other specialty tools, and then tons of hand tools. I, I can't even go over that. Where are all the hand tools? I'm not seeing from here. Are they in the drawers here? In drawers. Gotcha. Yeah. And then other places as well. Uh, they're normally up on pegs, but... Uh, so the pegboard is kind of empty. Yeah, and our last I space, I love we this. had, like, little tool outlines, so you knew where to put things back. Uh, nobody's done that yet, because, um, yeah... Frankly, we're just kind of a mess right now. Oh, that's a third planer. That's a nice one. Yeah, you can do some <laughs> rough cut wood in that. Um, anyway, so, Lyndon, what's out this door? Oh, that's a that's the yard. I'll show you that real quick. There's not much going on, but it's a pretty big are, space. Are these your storage bins? Yes. Yeah, extended member storage of a sort. Boy, we, maybe we can get some use out of something like that. Yeah, is we really want to make some use of the area out here. Um, Did y'all just and, buy these, or are they rented? What? Uh, we're right next to the harbor. So you can get them stupid cheap, huh? Yeah, you can get them stupid easy. It's more like it. But um, and y'all got a little trailer back there for carrying stuff around. Uh, a trailer, yeah. Uh, there's also a pretty big motor pool with the space. We've got uh, a deuce and a half and a unibog. And then, like, three electric vehicles and maybe one working at any one time. Is that a uh, generator? Uh, yes, actually. That's a 35,000-watt generator. And uh, we can run it on almost anything. Yeah. One of those that doesn't smell too great, but you can run it on French fry oil if you feel like it, huh? Uh, you can run it on French fry oil. You can run it on ethanol. You can run it on diesel. You can run it on kerosene. Yeah, there's... Like, you could probably run it on foreign beer and piss if you tried, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's nice. It's military, is what it is. Some surplus we picked up. The stacks on the top are baffles. Uh, so this actually runs silently, uh, wow. even under heavy load. Yeah, it, uh, I have a decently well-maintained vehicle. It runs quieter than that vehicle idles. <laughs> Yeah, because, you know, it's it's a military thing. If you've got this, like, wah, in the desert or something, then you're probably going to get some pot shots. Nice. Yeah. But uh, the only thing this has trouble running on is gasoline. 
Yeah, if you put gasoline in it, you have to mix in a, some motor oil or cooking oil or something, because gasoline doesn't self-lubricate like the other stuff. Gotcha. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you can see that the yard expands out a lot in this direction. Um, yeah, we really want to get some like raised beds and structures out here. I say, I'm going to, if I come back here, I'm building you a compost bin. That would make me happy. If I had seen this yard earlier in my visit, uh, you would have a compost bin right oh, now. I'm sorry. Okay. No, this wasn't included in my first tour. Yeah, this was supposed to be a compost bin. It's not yet. No, that would need a lot of work. Yeah. All right, All right so back inside. I love, who needs a spray booth when you have a backyard? Yeah. Well, we don't have a spray booth. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. All right, heading back. Remember that's been talking about building a deck between two of the storage containers? Uh-huh. Then we could just have this big, like, raised party area, some stairs going up. And nice. So, uh, left or right? Well, actually, what is all this straight across here? What is all, what are these, these uh, shelves, and this looks yeah. like just mess, but I'm sure yeah, it's not. Uh, I'll explain some of this mess. So, uh, from here to here, this is actually just mess. There's one member that's renting this whole bay because I think his spouse makes them. Um, <laughs> so this is his garage is what that is. Yeah, essentially. Uh, he uh, likes scrap yards and auctions and stuff like that. And he also picks up crazy projects, but he gets more materials for the projects than he can keep up with, which I think is a problem that most people have. Yeah. Uh, like, for example, I was tossing out all these old refrigerant tanks and, uh, let's see, I decided to ask the XRX, like, hey, does anyone want these old refrigerant tanks? It's like, mm, you know, scrap or air tanks or something. And he's like, oh, I'll take them, I'll take them. And he starts making these things. <laughs> he starts making jack-o'-lanterns with them. Yeah. It was just like a, just hit, sitting there with a plasma torch or something. Yeah, and he just jacks around. We have a handheld plasma torch, and he learned how to use it with these things. What a way to learn to use a plasma torch. Yep, these will last forever. Yeah. Nice. Now, uh, would you say that these things uh, pay for themselves as far as square footage goes? Like, uh, what you're charging is more than what you're paying in square footage? Or... Oh, yeah, definitely, by far. Yeah. Now, um, we're, we have enough space that we're able to do this a bit. Um, for people who can afford it. Yeah, well, it's easy to afford. It's like... Um, Maybe yep. another $220 on top of your normal membership per month. Well, I couldn't afford that. But I understand that some yeah. people who have, you know, jobs well, I mean, and careers some and stuff. places like, you know, tech shop or something, and that's what they charge for normal membership. <laughs> yeah, there is that. Yeah. There's a reason I don't, uh, there's a reason I'm more hacker space than a tech shop person anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so from here on to those other black rolling bins, uh... This is actually, Mark Sullivan brought most of this in, and uh, the reason it's here is because partially it's being organized, partially it's going to have a place for the more interesting stuff, like this, which is, this is a CNC wire bender. Nice. It's loaded up with a bunch of wire, and you can make, like, springs, or coat hangers, or, you know, who knows. Or whatever else you can make out of wire. Yeah. And that will do the job for you. I'm really interested in learning how to use this one. Yeah. Oh, crap, is this on? Um, yeah. And then there's lots of neat things. I'm really interested in knowing what all Mark Sheldon has done in his lifetime. It's like, this is cool. This is a medical laser. It's a uh, 120-watt YAG. <laughs> yeah. And then there's another one that's even bigger, and it's like this crazy shoulder-mounted laser cannon sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks like something you would mess with on, I don't know, Quake or something. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, and there's all these neat stuff, like uh, this thing with the three wheels. Uh, that's, um, that's a transformer winder. Yeah, it winds uh, toroidal transformers. <laughs> Yeah, there's a bunch of duplicates of tools we already have through here. Right, but hey, it's his, it's his storage, he's paying for it, so whatever. Oh, uh, he's, he's kind of paying for it right now. We're uh, paying for it in trade for having really awesome stuff in this space? Kind of, yeah. There's, there's an arrangement. Yeah, um, that's all right. Nothing wrong with that. And then you got a nice little propane-powered uh, forklift going here. Oh, we actually got two of them. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it, uh, we had to have two at our old space because there was a really high loading dock. And so we needed one forklift to lift the second forklift onto the loading dock and manipulate the other items that we would lift onto the, for, uh, onto the loading dock for the second forklift. And then we got pallet jacks and stuff like that to kind of even it out a bit. Too cool. All right, and what's behind you there? Yeah. Uh, that looks like an electric car transform. Yeah, it's an electric vehicle we're working on. It's a, uh, let's see, it's going to be like our art car. I don't know if y'all know. Houston, an art car is a really big thing. Yeah, you should, uh, wow. you should check out the, uh, the art car museum next time you're down. It looks like, Is that like the orange show? No, it looks like uh, Giger welded the building. So, so these are the forms for, or the, these are the, the slabs you're building? These are tabletops. Like, these are just fancier concrete than the usual. And uh, we actually got these buffers and stuff. So we can grind them down to like a glassy, smooth surface. You can kind of see the shine on them already. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing we can do is we can use like a white Portland cement and then add tints to it. And then add a bunch of like tinted stone or whatever. Then polish that down and you get terrazzo. I really want to do terrazzo on something. And I love your little stainless steel sink you got back here. Yeah, the, the inspector made us get that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had to get ins inspectors at one point, and we didn't really move in until after they left. But uh, they're like, oh, it was supposed to be a shop? Yeah, you can have a sink here. And I put behind that door, there's the bathroom, and it has sinks in it. And it's like, yeah, I need a sink here. And around the corner from the bathroom is a kitchen, and there's like three sinks in it. <laughs> Too far. Need sinks. Uh, at least it's close to the plumbing. No. It's a two-inch line, actually a little bit more than that, for uh, natural gas. <laughs> two-inch line for natural gas? How much freaking natural gas do you need? Well, it's Texas, so natural gas is, like, free. <laughs> yeah, anyways, uh, this little area here, which is being used for storage for some of the manual machine tools and whatnot, um, that is a big old tempering oven. And the idea is... There used to be a train that would have service through here, and uh, we. this was a nail factory, and a whole train car load of nails would go in the tempering oven, and then it would roll out through these doors. Actually, right here, uh, there's a roll-up door, and where there's concrete uh, curing right now, there's going to be... Um, there's going to be a vehicle lift, and then there's a private drive leading out to the road behind the roll-up. So we'll be able to have members uh, drive their vehicle in here, raise it up, work on it, do stuff like that. The only problem is we need to get some... Uh, we need to redo the foundation in this area because of all the weight that's going to be up on the lift. And uh, we need to get some kind of a permit for dealing with all the vehicle solvents and whatnot. And probably some sort of overhead uh, water fire system. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fire suppression. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, we could take it off of the gas line that's running overhead. That, that could work. There you go. Just blow propane on it. That puts fires out, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. If you got enough to displace the air like this one does. Jeez. So show me your bike zone here. All right. So uh, this is the member bay of one member. Uh, that's Ozzy. And this is just sort of given to him because he's really cool. Um, so... He worked, built this out as his bike lab, and he teaches lots of bike maintenance classes. And he will teach you everything, and he'll do it just for walking up with a bike. Um, he'll even supply you with the tools that you need to do different operations. So yeah, this is where members go to maintain their bikes. And it's great, as you'll see here, and he'll manufacture interesting bikes from scraps and stuff. And back here, yeah. I'm going to show you his back office. Sure. Show me his back office. Yeah. Let me show you Ozzy's back office. Watch your head. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go flip the light on on the other side.
I cannot hear a word you're saying. Okay, I'm happy with these lights. We just put them in. Uh, this is the new wing that we just tacked on. Uh, it used to be a place where some people would hoard like tires or something. Um, yeah, and been cleaning it up and wiring it up. And this is where we're gonna move the wood shop, and it's probably where we're gonna put uh, the kilns for ceramics and whatnot. And then who knows what else? But you know, we needed to expand. And then all that clutter of tools and stuff that I pointed out earlier, uh, a lot of that's gonna find homes around here. And then clearing up the clutter is gonna make more homes be available, so yeah. And those people who have the money and are willing to rent it, then you just kinda keep going, huh? No, no, we can afford this. They could, this could all be public area. Yeah. Yeah, like practically, um, yeah. Like we already covered all of our rents uh, through dues, and that's just basic dues. We just get like bonus money from when we rent a table or something like that. And then we make about as much from uh, you know, taking a cut on the classes. And the classes are cheap. It's like 60 bucks for a welding course. Yeah. And, and that's as much as you pay for a single uh, credit hour at, the col at, uh, at a community college. Yeah, it's like 60 bucks for a welding course, and then maybe like uh, 5 or $10 of that goes towards materials, and then the rest of it's split between the instructor and TXRX. And that's not set in stone, but... That's just yeah. kind of a guideline. Yeah, in general, the classes at TXRX are at $12 per instruction hour, plus materials, uh, and then... Uh, instructors normally take half. Yeah, there's not more to this place. I'm gonna head over to the other side with you. Um, is this another bay here to the right? What? Is this another private bay here? Yeah, this is a double bay, and there's a couple members that are actually working here. Um, I like this engine lift. It's useful. That gets lent out a lot. Ooh, a new thing. Some kind of... Ooh, a creepy kiln or something. Maybe it's for powder coating. I thought the powder coat was down there. Uh, this is like sandblasting and stuff, but that looks like a nice oven. Um, so here's the woodworking area again. This one runs uh, Linux CNC on that PC over there. Uh huh. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other CNC nodes through here. <laughs> yeah. And then small manual lathes and stuff like that. Um, that big monster over there is a uh, CNC lathe. Um, these two machines, the uh, the Birdmaster and the Akuma. Um, those were both donated in non-working condition and uh, they're hydraulic, so they're not as favored as all these uh, servo motor based machines and these retrofits and whatnot. Uh, but they are beefy and they do work. Yeah, this one's actually cool because it's got a CNC tool changer. This arm will like whip up and grab a tool and toss it on and you can just do job after job after job and not have to poke at it. Um, yeah, this lathe will actually generate so much swarp um, that it has this conveyor belt that will just carry it out to the side and then you can set up a bin just catching all the crap. Um, yeah, fun thing about this lathe, um, this is a trick to get to work because it's hard to do very complex things if you have to punch it in here. Uh huh. So, I had to figure out something for control. A bit loud. <laughs> uh 
Oh, God. Is that paper tape? Yes. Programming. Do you actually, you guys actually have a, a tape puncher? No, we, it's been converted. <laughs> USB. Okay. Yeah. I was about to be scared. It's pretty good. <laughs> the weld zone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll recognize most of this stuff. There's a 4x4 CNC plasma cutter. I think y'all have one just like it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, plasma cutter, welding, all sorts of welding technologies. Now, is all of this stuff privately owned? Is this the shops? It varies. That's the answer. <laughs> I want an instant inventory for every single beast. No, I'm just kidding. And you've got, you've got an extra drill press over here and everything. Yep. And I love... Oh, okay, you got a compressor up there. Yep. That's a pretty good compressor, actually. Nice um, steel rack. Yeah. There's a project to uh, get this plumb for the rest of the shop. I'm not sure if that's still going on or what point it's in. But, uh, yeah, if it actually does go around to the rest of the shop, the capacity of the line will probably be more than the capacity of the tank on the compressor. Uh, it takes a few minutes to get that up to, uh, to speed. I guess so. Um, and then here's a sandblast zone. Oh yeah, there's a couple like a uh, bender. Hey, look at this monster. You'll appreciate it. Yeah. When you come to Detroit, let me show you mine. All right, you got a 400 amp monster. All right. It used to be on a Navy battleship. Oh, I've got to see that. I'm trying to get it, get somebody who knows electronics to help me get it running. Sure. I mean, it's been running for years, but it's 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 puttering out right now, and I don't know enough electronics to actually make it work. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is the aluminum boundary on this little rolling part. Nice. Yeah. Just hook it up with propane and compressed air or oxygen or something. Yeah. Lots of little projects. Like Do you mind me asking what y'all are paying per square foot, if you know? Uh, let me try and calculate that. Or, yeah, I'm yeah. just really curious to know what your total square footage is and about what you're paying. Uh, it's uh, about 30,000 square feet. 30,000 square feet, plus the lofts and the yards. Yeah. Um, and what are we paying? Let me think about that. Uh... <laughs> See, about 15 cents a square foot. <laughs> yeah. And I thought Detroit was cheap. Well, yeah, but uh, stuff is actually on upswing in Houston right now, so things are getting a little bit more expensive. It's harder to find cheap real estate now than it was a couple years ago. You want to head out, Paul? All right. Um, well, it has been a pleasure. That's pretty much the whole thing, I think. Right. Thank you very much, Forrest. I appreciate it. I could take you around. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Let's go.